In Georgia, Donald Trump and his election-denying allies are facing a criminal investigation into their efforts to overturn the state's 2020 election results. And that investigation is rapidly intensifying. On Monday, Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani learned that he is a target of the probe. And on Wednesday, despite his best efforts to avoid having to do so, he testified for six hours in front of a special grand jury called by the Fulton County DA, Fonnie Willis. Willis issued a subpoena against Giuliani last month, which stated that Giuliani made false claims to the Georgia legislature about voter fraud in 2020. This week, we also learned that Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina will have to testify. A federal judge just rejected the senator's request to quash his subpoena to testify over two phone calls he made to Georgia election officials. We can also add conservative lawyer John Eastman to the list of upcoming witnesses. You might remember him as the guy who pushed Mike Pence to unilaterally overturn the election results. A judge in New Mexico is ordering Eastman, who's a resident of Santa Fe, to testify this month before the special grand jury in Georgia. Before her ruling, the judge said that Eastman had spoken to Georgia state lawmakers and drafted memos for the Trump campaign. But wait, there's more. The grand jury might also hear from sitting Republican Governor Brian Kemp. Kemp's still trying to quash his subpoena to testify before the grand jury, and he's accusing prosecutors of being politically motivated since he's running for re-election. But amid all of this news about witnesses who have testified or might soon testify in Georgia, it's important that we don't forget about the star witness in this entire case, the tape. So, look, all I want to do is this. I just want to find uh, 11,780 votes, which is one more that we have, because we won the state. My friend and legal analyst Joyce Vance is back with me. Joyce, I want to start off with an overall picture of Fonnie Willis's investigation. How would you assess, as a former prosecutor, how would you assess her strategy up until this point? So it's really interesting, Katie. We don't know precisely what her strategy is, but she's been very aggressive about bringing in witnesses, very aggressive about naming people as targets. And we know she's a deeply experienced prosecutor at these sort of complicated cases. She has experience with RICO. She's highly regarded and she appears to be fearless. There's all of that in favor of this Georgia investigation. But if you look at it really from um, outside of the equation of what's going on in Georgia, you also have to be a little bit taken aback that this incredibly important national issue whether or not a former president sought to intervene illegally in an election is being put on the shoulders of a county prosecutor in a state because Fonnie Willis's resources, no matter how smart and aggressive she is, just don't stack up favorably with those that DOJ has. So we have these sort of dueling reactions. On, on the one hand, she appears to be acting fairly and, and the way a good prosecutor should act. On the other hand, it's hard to view it as being anything other than a little bit of a David and Goliath, a county prosecutor going up against a former president of the United States. You know, Joyce, though, in some way, there's this discrete issue that Fonnie Willis is dealing with. There's not some huge sweeping uh, situation. I mean, I, I would concede that we can look at other states when it comes to the election deniers and their attempts to, you know, overturn those election results in, the, in those other states. But Fonnie Willis is focusing on what happened in Fulton County, Georgia. That's her jurisdiction. So in some way, is her job easier despite having limited resources? Is her job easier because she can look at a specific discrete period of time with certain actors? You know, I think in the investigation, your analysis is a good one, Katie, because she can look just as, at this discrete incident. Um, she's got the former president on tape, a tape that both you and I as prosecutors would be proud to play to a jury. It's great evidence. But her investigation seems to be widening, and she's having to fight these fights in federal district courts in other states, Arizona with John Eastman, Lindsey Graham, 
tried to go to court in his home state, South Carolina. And all of that adds uh, to the wear and tear on her office. She has a lot of other important responsibilities. She's the DA for Metro Atlanta. And so still, I I, um, respect her greatly for being willing to take this on. It just has always seemed a bit unfair to me that she's asked to shoulder a burden that DOJ might be in a better place to take a look at. So let's talk about one of those critical people that she's had contact with, which is Rudy Giuliani. What does it mean to be a, quote, target in this investigation? And then, frankly, what does that mean for Donald Trump himself? So that word target has a lot of content in the federal system. It means that prosecutors have virtually made the decision to indict you. It's less clear what it means in state court in Georgia, where it's not used quite as precisely. But it seems clear that Willis is bending over backwards to be fair to potential defendants. And this target letter was sent to make sure that Giuliani was aware before he testified that he might want to consider asserting Fifth Amendment rights. Often this sort of a, a you know notation to a defendant can be used to open plea agreement uh, conversations. And so not entirely clear, but again, it seems to indicate that this uh, investigation is being run in a highly professional way. And what it signifies for the former president is that he should be very afraid of what's going on in Fulton County, because Fonnie Willis has, uh, you know, just really outstanding um, sort of lines of investigation open to her. At some point, it seems likely that some of these witnesses are going to implicate the former president. If someone like Giuliani were to decide that they wanted to cooperate in an effort to spare themselves a lengthy jail sentence, the former president, too, could find himself involved in this investigation very directly, very quickly. You know, Joyce, we talk about those many battles that are being fought to obtain and secure the lawful compliance by people like Rudy Giuliani, Lindsey Graham, John Eastman, Jenna Ellis is another example. But we got six hours of something out of Rudy Giuliani the other day. Don't know how much of it was alleged attorney-client privilege. Don't know how much Fifth Amendment was raised. But six hours later, there is some fruit that is born from those battles. How important is it in front of a special grand jury? Because I want people to remember, this is a special grand jury. They're not going to issue an indictment, right, for people. They're just collecting the evidence and collecting the, the information. How important is it to secure Lindsey Graham, John Eastman, Jenna Ellis, this parade of people, these Trump election deniers, for something like Fonnie Willis's investigation? Is it necessarily dispositive for her to then try to secure an indictment against somebody like Donald Trump? I think if you're Fonnie Willis, you want testimony from all of these people. They are material witnesses in your case, and she's entitled to that testimony. If you look at all of the efforts to avoid testifying, they come down to one argument that these witnesses are making, and it's essentially this. We are above the law. Yes, we understand other people would have to testify to a grand jury, but we don't think that we should have to. And so Lindsey Graham tries to rely on his status as a senator But Bonnie Willis doesn't want to talk to him about his work as a senator. She wants to ask about political phone calls he made to Georgia officials asking them to take specific actions following an election. None of these other folks has any sort of privilege or unusual circumstances that would keep them outside of the ambit of the grand jury. And when you think about how this impacts other cases, Why should these people get this special treatment of not having to appear in front of a grand jury when every day all across the country, witnesses who have testimony that will be helpful to grand jury uh, investigations are subpoenaed and they testify without a lot of fuss? They may not want to go. It may be inconvenient. They may have work to do. They may have other issues. But we go because this is how a rule of law system works with prosecutors who are charged with getting to the truth of matters and holding people accountable when criminal conduct occurs. You know, Joyce, I think people are tired and I think that there's this let's hurry up, let's kind of pick up the pace kind of energy. But I think if we all kind of slow down a little bit, we see that significant and substantive progress is being made at many different levels, federal and state Joyce Vance, what a treat and a luxury to have you for two blocks today. I appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Thanks for having me, Katie.